decisions, decisions, decisions. Welcome to another episode of The Brood Awakening, where I wake you up to the harsh realities in your personal and professional lives. Today's harsh reality, decisions. What do you mean, Brew? Great question. Glad you asked. We make tons of decisions every day. And those are just the conscious ones that we're aware of. What to have for breakfast, what to eat, directions to uh, travel to the office. All those little decisions throughout the course of the day while you're at work or at school. If you kept a running tally of how many decisions you had to make just consciously, your mind would be blown over the course of a 24 hour period. And here's what happens. Your mind wears down, your mind wears out. It's called decision fatigue. And it is a very, very real phenomenon. One in which I want to try and wake you up today to. Hence the brood awakening. It's a harsh reality that we make a lot of decisions. It's the uh, simultaneous joy and pain of being the most advanced species on the planet. It's one of the crosses we bear, so to speak. What can you do to make better decisions? I'll start by saying what you can do is make less of them. What do you mean, Brew? I mean literally make less decisions. And let me explain. Willpower drives decision making. You want to make better decisions, um, have more willpower, have more daily discipline. It isn't necessarily something that you can uh, practice and get better at. It's something you have to a certain extent. Uh, sure, you can get a little more disciplined. You can uh, develop a little more willpower. But we wake up every morning with a certain amount of funds in our decision making, our willpower bank account, so to speak. And as we make more of these decisions over the course of the day, we sort of deplete our funds in our willpower bank account. Which is why I am encouraging you to literally make less decisions over the course of your day, every single day. If you've been watching my videos, you'll notice probably a couple things. But one big one being what you see me wearing in these videos. Nine times out of 10, you're gonna see me wearing a black shirt. Or simply a colorful Under Armour polo shirt. That's by design. It isn't just what I happen to throw on on any given day. Um, it's not the same black shirt every single time. I bathe, I wash my clothes. I have probably at least 10 black shirts just like this, or some variation of this. Short sleeve, long sleeve, button up shirts. I have half a dozen pairs of the exact same blue jeans. Carhartt blue jeans. And I have two pairs of shoes that I wear. A brown pair and a black pair. Depending on what else I'm wearing. Uh, why? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Because I don't have to think about what I'm going to put on. Um, how do I match pants to a shirt? And what shoes or belt? I'm wearing a black shirt and blue jeans in the fall and the winter. In the spring and the summer, I'm wearing a short sleeve black shirt and shorts. Just about every day, unless I have to wear a business suit or um, some other sort of business casual professional attire. Even then, most of the time, you'll find me in 
a black shirt. One less thing I have to think about. It's on autopilot. I also drink the same drink for breakfast every morning. The green drink that I make. It's automated. I don't have to think about what am I going to have for breakfast. I get the same coffee, drink the same drink. Nine times out of ten, I'm having the same thing for lunch every day. Why? It's one less decision I have to make. What am I going to have for lunch? I don't have to think about it. It's automated. You can do the same thing with meal prep for every single meal of your week. Prep all your meals on Sunday, ration them out, and travel with them throughout the week. Simple yes, easy no. But it's one less decision you have to make. If you have to go to the refrigerator and figure out what you're going to eat or figure out what to, what to make, you've already lost. You're probably going to make a bad decision about food, but also it's another decision that's depleting your willpower, your decision-making bank account, so to speak, depleting those funds. Which is why you'll notice most people who are dieting, their diet goes to hell at night. Their diet doesn't go to hell first thing in the morning. That's when they have the most willpower. As you've depleted your decision-making ability, later in the day, you start to make worse decisions, worse business decisions, worse personal decisions at home, and worse decisions about snacking and food. There's a reason why people tend to snack at night. Their defenses are down because they've run out of willpower. So I want to encourage you to automate as many things as you can to eliminate decision making. What are some examples of that? I just gave you some. Meal prep. Or just decide, this is what I'm going to have every day. Is it fun? No, it's boring. It's not sexy. It's not fun. But people who perform at a high level and enjoy what they do don't eat for entertainment. They eat for performance. They fuel their body for performance, not for pleasure. When it comes to food. Automate your wardrobe. Black shirt, blue jeans, boots. It's what I wear. It's what I wear. It's how I roll. You don't have to do the same thing. Do what works for you. Here's another one. Get up and go to bed at the exact same time every day. One less decision you have to make. What time am I getting up? What time am I going to bed? Okay. Right? I go to bed at 10 o'clock most nights. Unless it's a weekend and I'm out with family or friends. And I'm up by 6 a.m. at the latest. Just about every day. It's one less decision I have to make. And you will get to a point with that where your body is just ready to go to bed. You're tired at 10 o'clock. And your body will wake you up at 6 or whatever time you designate without an alarm clock. You'll get into a natural rhythm. And that natural rhythm is real healthy your body telling you you're well rested what are other things you can automate meeting times removing notifications from your phone every time a notification pops up on your smartphone smart I use that term loosely you have to decide hmm what is this am I gonna open it or not what do we usually decide? We usually have a knee-jerk reaction and we make a, a bad decision. We open that and we go down a rabbit hole that we can't get ourselves out of. Remove all notifications from your phone. The only two notifications I keep on my phone are local weather and natural disaster alerts. If anything else is going on, someone's going to call me and tell me about it. But I want to know about the tornado or the earthquake as soon as possible. To get rid of notifications on your phone, it's one less decision you have to make. Benchmark when you are going to look at email. 
again, taking taking that notification off your phone helps with that. You know, I've benchmarked and I'm gonna look at emails mid-morning and mid-afternoon. And it's scheduled in my calendar. Unless I have an appointment with another living, breathing human being, typically at 11 a.m., I'm gonna spend 30 minutes getting through my emails. And typically at 3 p.m., I'm gonna spend 30 minutes getting through my emails. I'm batching that task. I don't have to decide when to do it. That decision's been made for me. So the less you can uh, consult with your feelings on different decisions, the better off you will be. The takeaway for you is how can you automate your life in a way that you can make less decisions? Knowing exactly what you're going to do from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed and scheduling it is helpful. Reducing how much bandwidth you have to occupy making different decisions will help you perform better. Your, your work day is a, and your, your entire day for that matter is a marathon not a sprint. Stop treating it like a sprint. Sprinting from decision to decision, disaster or crisis to crisis. Automate as much as you can and schedule it. You're running a marathon, you know exactly where the hydration stations are. Schedule your hydration and know what you're going to drink in advance. Carry a water bottle, right? You know what happens at different mile markers. We all have mile markers in our life and our daily schedule. Script and decide to execute certain things at certain mile markers so you're not at the mercy of your feelings or preferences. It's not something you're doing to yourself, it's something you're doing for yourself. I'll leave you with this last thought. Do not allow your door to be open in your office all the time to be quote approachable and have that open door policy all the time why you're inviting interruptions every time you have an interruption yep you guessed it you have to make a decision you decide to stop what you're doing and start talking to an employee a co-worker a colleague your boss whoever have office hours. I think it's one of the greatest things you can take from academia. College professors, if you recall, hold certain office hours, scheduled time during the week, where they are available to you to answer questions. You can't just knock on their door whenever and expect them to be at your beck and call. Nor should you allow people to just interrupt you and not have respect for your time and pull you away from whatever important thing you're doing whenever they feel like it. You know, life's about decisions, life's about priorities. The less decisions you can make, the better decisions you will make. When you prioritize things, you'll also start to see your results improve and start to see yourself make better decisions. So that's several ways you can reduce and never eliminate decision fatigue, but you certainly can reduce it. I've just given you several tools to do so. If you've enjoyed the video, found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're watching this on BrewTube, and feel free to head over to my website, coachbrew.com. There's plenty more resources just like this right there. This has been The Brood Awakening. See you next episode.